The topic of the month for January is Introduction to Safety Risk Management, SRM. In this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about recommendations from a work group that studies general aviation mishaps. We'll define and discuss safety risk management and how pilots use SRM to not only fly safer, but more efficiently. Finally, we'll show you some SRM aids and technologies. But first, let's look at what SRM is. So Megan, do you think that we can cover safety risk management in a minute or less? No way, Jay. SRM covers a lot of ground, but we could define the term and make a case for practicing SRM. Risk management is a three-step process that people use to identify hazards, express how likely those hazards are to negatively impact their operations, and to reduce the chances that those hazards will cause an accident. That's right, Megan, and we exercise the process every day. Suppose you have a pizza that's ready to come out of the oven. Yum! You're making me hungry. I'm making me hungry too, but before we can chow down, we'll have to get that pizza out of the oven. I see where you're going with this. The hot pan and oven rack are hazards. If we touch them with our bare hands, it's very likely we'll be burned, and we'd say the risk of injury is high. Right you are. We need to do something that will reduce that risk to an acceptable level. We could turn off the oven and let it cool down. But that could take hours and I'm starving. How about we just get some hot pads or gloves and get that pie on the table where it'll do some good? We'll go. But first, we've identified a hazardous condition, decided that it could likely cause an injury, and mitigated the risk of injury to an acceptable level. And here's an aviation example. You're planning a cross-country flight that you make frequently. Usually, you can make it back home without refueling, but today the winds aloft for your return trip will be howling in the wrong direction. The hazard is that you could run out of fuel on the way home. At the very least, you're likely to be dipping into your reserves on the way back. So, we'll mitigate the risk by refueling before we start for home, and that's a very short course on safety risk management. Let's eat. Just a minute. If you want to learn more, Go to FAASafety.gov to view all of the Minute for Safety videos, including flight risk assessment tools for pilots. This message was brought to you by your FAA safety team, making a difference for aviation safety. As we saw in the video, SRM is a three-step process beginning with hazard identification. What conditions or circumstances could negatively affect your flight? Risk assessment. How likely are the identification hazards to cause a problem and how severe will the consequences be if they do? Risk mitigation. What can I do to reduce the risks to an acceptable level? Finally, we need to constantly monitor the hazards and risks associated with our flight to make sure that the identified risks remain at an acceptable level. So, back to the video. What are the hazards here? That's right, the hot oven, pizza, and the pizza pan are hazards. A famous Alaskan bush pilot was asked how he assessed the risks of landing at unfamiliar backcountry strips. His answer? Well, the first thing you want to ask yourself is, how bad is the wreck going to look? The photo on the left shows a well-executed short field landing at an annual Alaskan contest in Valdez. No airplanes were harmed in the filming of this event, and the landing was a success. No wreck. But the photo on the right shows another Alaskan landing on a beach. The combination of aircraft, pilot, and environment didn't work out optimally in this case, and if the pilot had assessed this result as likely, he might not have attempted the landing. But we were talking pizza, not planes. We have a hot oven, pan, and pie. How bad is the wreck going to look if we just reach in there and grab it? Think in terms of likelihood and severity. Likelihood first, if we reach in with our bare hands and grab the pan, how likely is it that we'll be burned? Right you are. It's highly probable that we will be burned. 
we're going to be hurt. The question is, how bad is it going to look? Here are your severity choices. Well, this burn won't kill us, but it's not going to be marginal or negligible either, so we're left with critical. Not in a life or death context, but critical in that it'll be a while before our hands are fully functional again, and that could compromise the jobs we have to do. Here's a risk matrix from FAA's Risk Management Handbook. You can see that the combination of probable and critical equals high risk, and we must do something to reduce that risk to an acceptable level. We saw that the risk of injury from the hot oven and pie was mitigated to an acceptable level by using hot pads or gloves to get the pie on the table. Note that the risk of injury is less when the whole hand is protected, a little more likely if hot pads are used. Also, note that the risk is not eliminated, just reduced. We could still burn an unprotected area, or our gloves might be defective, but overall the risk has been mitigated to an acceptable level. The pizza example is simplistic. We all know that flying involves an extensive set of variables, and a simple flight on one day can be impossible on another. Let's take a look at a GA flight. In this example, an 850-hour private pilot will be flying his family from Santa Ana, California, to a reunion event in Lake Tahoe. The weather is forecast to be good along the route. The pilot will go straight to the airport after work and meet his family there. If all goes as planned, the flight will depart at or a little before 6 p.m. So what hazards should be considered for this trip? Would you say the risks are acceptable? If not, what could the pilot do to mitigate them? Do you want an easier way to do it? Introducing the Fast Frat, an easy-to-use, basic flight risk assessment tool for general aviation pilots. The FASTFRAT is a simple automated spreadsheet that contains 20 condition statements for VFR pilots, 22 for IFR pilots. The statements describe common general aviation flight liabilities and assets. Pilots simply click the yes box next to each statement that applies to their flight. Each yes statement generates a risk value and those values are totaled on the sheet. The total risk value is related to the risk matrix chart to determine whether the flight risk is likely to be low, moderate, or high. In this example, the pilot has fewer than 15 hours in the last 90 days, but a wings phase was completed in the last six months. The risk of low recent experience is canceled by the wings phase completion. Surface winds will be greater than 15 knots, resulting in a risk value of plus four. The flight will be to a non-towered airport, ceiling will be less than 3,000 feet, and there is no weather reporting at the destination. This results in a total risk value of 15. Looking at the risk matrix chart, we see that a total risk value of 15 is between low and moderate for a VFR pilot with fewer than 100 hours time and type, but well within the low range for an IFR pilot with more than 100 hours time and type. No frat can cover all possible flight hazards, but this one, though simple, does address some factors that are common to GA accidents. We hope its use will prompt pilots to learn more about safety risk management. To get your copy, here's what you do. Navigate to FAAsafety.gov, click on Resources, then click on Library. Click on Flight Risk Assessment Tool, FRAT. Download the appropriate FRAT for your computer. But how about those of us who don't carry a laptop computers with us everywhere we go? Introducing the Fast FRAT app, a free program from Apple iOS available in the App Store. To use the app, simply enter your flight experience and certification level into your pilot profile. Then, VFR rated pilots select which of 21 conditions apply to your flight. IFR pilots consider 23 conditions. Some conditions increase risk, others decrease risk. As you select conditions, a total risk value accumulates and it's displayed graphically on your device. Here you can see the beginning of a risk assessment. The pilot has selected four conditions that apply to the flight. After that, the assessment will move on to flight conditions. As conditions are selected, the flight risk slider moves from left to right as risk values accumulate. 
When a risk reduction condition is selected, the slider moves from right to left, indicating the reduction in total risk value. Here's the display you'll get when the risk value is low. Note that the slider bar and total risk value have a green background. As the risk value becomes moderate, the display background color changes to yellow. And when the risk value goes into the red, it's imperative that we do something to reduce our risk exposure. The FastFrat app provides a simple and easy introduction to safety risk management for general aviation pilots. The device stores your pilot profile information, but doesn't automatically store individual risk assessments. Each time the app is opened, all condition statements are set to off, although you can take a picture of your risk assessment and save that image for future reference. Users can, if they wish, share risk assessments with third parties such as CFIs, Flying Club dispatch personnel, or friends and family. Just click on the email icon to send a copy of the risk assessment to people you designate. To get your copy of the FRAT app, just navigate to the Apple App Store and search for Flight Risk Assessment Tool. Please direct any questions to your local FAST team representative. Narration by Bradford Wood, FAST Team National Outreach Manager. There's nothing like the feeling you get when you know you're playing your A game, and in order to do that, you need a good coach. So fly regularly with a CFI who will challenge you to review what you know, explore new horizons, and to always do your best. Of course, you'll have to dedicate time and money to your proficiency program, but it's well worth it for the peace of mind that comes with confidence. Vince Lombardi, the famous football coach, said, Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. For pilots, that means flying with precision, on course, on altitude, on speed, all the time. And be sure to document your achievement in the WINGS proficiency program. It's a great way to stay on top of your game and keep your flight review current. Your presence here shows that you are a vital member of our general aviation safety community. The high standards you keep and the examples you set are a great credit to you and to GA. Thank you for attending.